When you're doing panelling, when you're setting out for anything, this is a big must. This has a magnetic track. Reason it's so good. There you go, plonk it on. Now you want to set your height for where your panelling wants to start. Press the on button. So set your height. So lasers on, this comes to the wall, and you're left with this nice clean laser line. Now let me show you this little detail. We are meeting to that little point there. That is going to be our dating point. That is what we're working to. Now what I recommend is you're going to be moving around the room a lot. So let's not just rely on that. Mark it there. Once you've marked it, draw a clean line. Now the reason is, one, we can turn the laser off, save the batteries. But two, when you're moving around the room, the laser won't bounce around. This line will stay fixed. Now we have a clear line that runs all the way around. Now this is going to be our top edge. This is a thicker bit of decorative moulding. The inside is going to be thinner, but this is what we're going to use to fit along the top. Okay, so we're going to start cutting now. There's two things you need. You need a sharp pencil. So, this is how carpenters sharpen pencils. It's a real skill in itself. So, on a real sharp point. Highly recommend you get a tool belt, it doesn't matter which one you use. But what I do recommend is you get one with buckles. Don't get the Velcro ones, they're rubbish, they always move. That has the buckles and you can strap yourself in. These will stay. Velcro ones, no go. So now we'll be wanting a chop saw. Now, I've seen a few guides where they mention using a box square or where you've got the box and it cuts in different angles. Don't use that, don't use that. If you're gonna save money by not getting a chip in, at least use one of these. It'll be impossible without. This can set your angle, set your uh, bevel. Yeah, brilliant. This is old, but it's a real trusty bit of kit. And we get a measurement. Now the first cut, you want a mitre. I'm gonna explain why in a bit, but it's so the corners of the room meet. So, we want to set the saw, put it on a 45 degree angle, and we're going to mitre it in ways, so it's got a nice mitre meeting in. Now, you've got this nice mitre meeting in the corner of the room, that when the other end comes in, it'll meet nicely in there. So, so we want to be using an adhesive with this, you don't just be relying on pins, this is Grip Bond Pro. Now, I use this a lot. I've used it for rendering beads, I use it in carpentry. It's just a general all purpose grip fill. It's brilliant though, it sticks and um, it does the job. So, at a nice amount, what you don't want is to overload the. Just put a thin sliver. Because what you don't want, you don't want all the adhesive peeling over the edge. So, just a little bit as you go. And then, using some panel pins, whack it in. Our essential bit of kit is one of these. This is a hole punch. And this is what you're going to use to punch your nails deeper down. In close. And just punch them in. That's why these pouches are so handy because you end up with so many little tools. Just keep it in there. So that's the first bit done. So we've got that back wall set. And now you can see what it's going to look like in terms of heights and layout. So now, put these things in. So, what I've done is measured the top, got our lines marked out. Good to score our first line. So what we want when we're creating this pattern is we've got 100 millimetres from the wall, 100 millimetres in the centre. Now what I like to do is mark out the square of a pencil, mark out what it's going to look like, and then we can start cutting them into place. So this, is what we're going for. That's what we're going to have. Now I want to measure end to end and start cutting. Now all these cuts need to be mitered. Where the cuts meet, we need to have an intersection at a 45 degree angle. That's a good line, isn't it? <laughs> this means that when they join, they'll all be joined nicely. So you get your measurement, and then you miter it from the furthest point. So say this is the furthest point of the cut, you want your miter to end at the furthest point, 
and finish at the shortest. That's what we're going to be aiming for. And make sure that your profile is correct. So you've got your thickness at the top and the lower detail is at the bottom. Now this bit should be fairly easy. If the cuts were square, the cuts were mitered at a 45 degree precisely, and all your levels are level and plumb, then at this point it should really be easy. All we're doing is marking up, make sure the lines meet up on where you drew. What I like to do is fix the top point first, put a bit of adhesive, the same, only a little strip, you don't want too much. And if anything, you want less on this row, not much at all. Now, the great thing about this adhesive, it's got a bit of an instant hold, so as soon as you start, has got a good grip and it'll kind of hold its own weight. So make sure your corners meet. Make sure you're precise. Where your lines are is exactly where your moulding needs to be. Line falls all the way around, finishes at the nice point. Now what you want is when you offer it up, a nice clean cut. You see? Following the line either side, and that mitre meets flush. That, to be honest, is all to do with the saw. That's how good your mitre saw is. Again, if you were doing this with a block, a uh, cutting box, then it'd just be so hard to do. A mitre box, sorry. Chop saw, it's just the only way in my opinion. Quick tip, you want to be using some PVA on the corners. This is Bondit PVA. Again, this sent me loads of stuff, so that's what I'm using. But I really like the Gorilla Glue as well. Their PVA is brilliant. What we're going to do is just add a bit of PVA to the mitres and then when we nail them up close to each other they've got a nice bond on the mitres as well as a fixing point so that is a real good tip. I'll show you another way of doing it in a bit. And then when you're done you'll have a bit of PVA excess let's just wipe it back that'll sit nicely in the groove same likewise Great thing about PVA, it dries clear, and it's very easy to sand, and it'll sit nicely in the gaps, which means it'll give it a stronger bond at the mitres. Is it? Simple as that. So that's the first rectangle in place. Now, it's very easy. It's very easy to do, and it's quite easy to fix. As long as all your cuts right, everything's square, plumb, you're fine. I'm going to show you another way to fix them together. What I'm going to do is make a complete rectangle and then fit it as one. I'm going to show you that now. Right, so I've got my four pieces cut. Too long, too short. Now I'm going to show you a little hack and how to fix them together. And when we can put them up, we can put it as one. This stuff is called Mitre Fast. This is a glue and you've got an activator. This is brilliant stuff. You glue them all together. This is a rapid setting glue. So what you do is you put a tiny bit on the corner. Tiny bit. You do not need a lot of this stuff. Activator on the other. So glue on one corner, activator on the other. Hold it for a good few seconds. And then, that's it. They glued together. Got a nice mitre, you're good to go. So I'm just gonna do that to the other corners. I need to get a bit of food in. One, I'm hungry, and two, we're about to face a bit of a problem in the front room. Not a massive problem, but it needs some thinking. So let's jump onto that right now. That bit's in. We've got the tops in place, but now we're gonna come to a problem. Here's why. Let's turn this back on. 
Now what we're looking at is this line. We're gonna follow this through to the other side of the room. Look where it hits. It literally hits right in line with the sill. Literally just touching underneath. Now imagine the chances on that where you run the panel in, run it right through, it'd look awful. We're always gonna have these problems when you start designing and mapping out your room for the paneling. You're always gonna hit obstacles and you're always gonna get areas where it doesn't quite work. The reason why it's to keep that height is because it works well with a fireplace. It's not too obtrusive, it's just a nice height. And on the light switch here, it's a nice distance from the plug socket to the bottom. It looks even. Even on the plug sockets over there, it's a nice distance between the two. Now you might have had a little skim shot then on what you want to do. We want to do this. When you're at obstacles, you make a you bootleg it, you work around it, you do a little L shape, and you make a feature of the windowsill. So as you can see what we've done here, instead of just running it through, you make a feature out of it. This problem is with designing and making sure you've got your mapping right. It's are always going to bump into elements in the room where it's going to get in the way. You're always going to hit little obstacles and you're always going to get little parts that don't really make sense. That's why these work so well. You can run your line all around the room and you can see exactly what's going to work and what isn't. Having a line and a clear guide running all the way through makes a massive difference because you can start planning the room in and around it. So we're going to get a few more cuts on. Now here's a few little tips on how to successfully cut timber for the best. First thing, this is pine, it's a very soft wood, which means you've got to be very careful with it. So the first tip, cut very slow. When you bring in a chop saw down, take your time, don't rush it, just take nice slow, and that way the blade can cut through the timber without ripping it apart. Because this is a soft wood, if you're going fast, it'll just splinter it, it'll go everywhere. It'll be a nightmare. Number two, make sure you've got a nice sharp blade, that makes a massive difference. If you start smelling burning when you're cutting, that means the blade's blunt and it's ready for a changeover. And the final thing, just check your mitres, make sure you've actually got 45. So when you're adjusting the saw, make sure, it's set, even though it says 45, check it with a square or something likewise, where you can actually check the cut, make sure it is 45 degrees. And the last thing, when you are about to cut the timber, make sure before you bring the blade down, the blade is on full speed. You don't want to be going in on the blade when it's at half speed. Don't do it before, it'll, again, it'll just try and grind through the timber and just rip it up. So there are some tips on how to successfully cut. Let me get these cut up and then we can get them fixed over there. <laughs> This is why pine's very annoying. Look at this. Look at this. So we've got this nice bit of glue work, all meeting lovely. Except for the glue. Yep. Happy days, nice mitres. So that was the last one I fixed. And then we get this. Look at that. Massive split right through the middle. That's what happens with shitty pine. Coming off and doing it again. Nice one. I'm a few mil off here. A few mil off, but that is one beautiful mitre. And so is that one. So even though it's off, I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> then we're left with something that looks like this. Make a feature out of the sill. All good. So that is how you get around them little disputes there. I'm going to show you how to measure up with this final part. This is the final bit we've got to do. So the simple way to explain this is you get your width for the wall. So this is 1290. Let's just round it up to 1.3 meters for argument's sake. Let's just say that. And what you do is you decide how many squares, rectangles, features you want in the middle. Now we're just gonna have one in the center of this wall. So you just have one. Now you've gotta realize how many rails are either side. So you've got one on the left, one on the right. They're both 100 meter, 100 millimeter in thickness. So you get two of them, two times 100 millimeters is 200 millimeters. So you get your 200 millimeters, you take it from your 1,300 millimeters, and then what you're left with is how wide you want your square to be. Now, this makes more sense, I'll write it down in the description below. I know it's extremely boring explaining it. 
<laughs> I tried my best. So what we're going to do, I'm going to quickly cut and fix them together and that is literally it, the last part of the puzzle. So this top section, we've got to run it through and stop it on a reveal and that's because we're going to have shutter blinds in spot. So we're going to finish it there. So what I've got to do is cut a piece and then it'll slot into place. It looks like this. You've got a nice clean mitre. Now push it in. Meets nicely in the edge. And then I'm going to bring it through. I'm going to finish it nicely there. And that is how we finish that top edge. Now that is something that looks like this. It runs all the way around. Now the next part is the exciting bit. I've got to start filling and painting. But that is for another day. Now if you want to see another example of how to panel a wall, the one we've did, and this is a bit easier, but looks equally as effective, then click this video here. And if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Cheers.